Hello and welcome to the seventh installment of this series on fields. Today we're going to talk about potential and potential difference and how that's uh, called voltage in electricity. So for those that have previously studied uh, electricity and didn't really fully understand voltage, this video is for you. Uh, as we go this, through this concept, we're going to explain potential and how it relates to potential energy and also go through a gravity and electricity analogy for series and parallel circuits. Now, as you can see here, this image perfectly encapsulates electrical and gravitational potential. Now, let's begin. Let's look at this statement here. Potential is to potential energy as what field strength is to force. And we're really going to unpack that uh, statement here in this first uh, section here. So remember field strength. We remembered that it was for gravitational, the force per unit mass, and field strength for electrostatics was the force per unit charge. Now very similarly here, gravitational potential and electrostatic potential uh, is actually uh, for gravitational, it's the potential energy per unit mass, or the potential energy on one kilo at any point in space. And for electrostatics, it's the potential energy on one coulomb uh, due to a field at any point in space. So potential can be represented as V. So in gravitational, V equals the potential energy per mass. Now we know the potential energy in gravitational is minus GMM on R. So we can derive the potential gravitational potential is minus GM on R for a point source uh, anywhere in space there. Now for electrostatics, uh, VE equals the potential energy per charge. Uh, and so for a point source, we have minus KQQ on R for the potential energy. And so the potential itself, electrostatic, is minus KQ on R. Okay, and there we have those two key formulas there for potential, both gravitational and electrostatic. So as you can see in these diagrams here, the potential is the potential energy per mass or on one kilo at any point in space. As we get further out, the potential energy increases, so the potential increases. Similarly, it's per charge for electrostatics. Okay, let's define potential difference. Potential difference is the difference in potential between two points in space. So in electricity, this is also known as the voltage. And for example, we actually measure this voltage in a battery by determining the potential energy per charge, which is potential at one end, versus the other. And the calculated difference between those two points is the potential difference. And that's really the key point. We have to find it between two points. Okay, now let's clarify this idea with gravitational potential in a uniform field. And we're going to use that similar example of Newton sitting under his tree. Okay, now what we've got is different points in space uh, and with different masses. And we know potential energy is equal to mgh for a uniform field. Uh, we can actually say that vg in a uniform field is potential energy per mass, which will cancel the small mass out, so it would actually just be gh. So looking at this uh, here, we're doing some quick calculations. The potential energy for one kilo at one meter is 9.8 joules. Pe for at two meters is 19.6 joules and here it's 29.4 joules at three meters for that one kilo object. Now, the potential at that point will be 9.8 times one, which will be 9.8 joules per kilo, 19.6 joules per kilo, and 29.4 joules per kilo is the potential at each of those points. Now, looking at this one, the potential energy is actually a lot bigger because the mass is three kilos. So at one meter, we have 29.4 joules. At three, uh, two meters, sorry, for three kilos, we have mgh, which will be 58.8 uh, joules. 
Now, 3 kilos at 3 metres will give us a potential energy of 88.2 joules, which is a lot bigger. So increasing the mass makes it bigger. Now, as you can see here, the potential doesn't change between the 1 and the 3 kilos. Uh, and that's pretty much saying gravitational potential is independent of mass. It's really dependent on the height or position and the gravitational field strength. And that's really how we've defined potential as being the potential per mass. Okay, let's look at electrostatics and uh, the electrical potential in a uniform field. Okay, now a clarification from the previous video is that the change in potential energy, not just the potential energy itself, is equal to QED. Now D is often referred to as the plate separation, uh, E is the electric field strength, and Q is the charge that's within that field. Okay, so the change in potential energy or the difference in potential energy is equal to QED. Now, where this relates to is the change in potential is actually equal to QED on Q, which is the change in potential energy on Q. And we can simplify that as the little Qs cancel out, we get electric field strength times D, or the distance, or the separation. So it's quite a simple formula. So if we had an electric field strength of 100 newtons per coulomb and a separation of 2 centimetres, or 0.02 metres, the potential difference, or delta V, would be 100 times 0.02, which is 2 joules per coulomb. Now this is actually the same as 2 volts. So the potential difference, or the voltage, is 2 volts between those plates. Okay, so if you increase the separation, or you increase the electric field, you increase the potential difference. Uh, and in summary, uh, the potential difference is 2 volts, which is the voltage. Uh, so the vol voltage is defined as potential difference. Now a key point here is, uh, these two plates have a potential difference of 2 volts. The actual potential at each point could be different things. So for example, the voltage at the top would could be... Uh, let's say um, positive one volts and the bottom could be negative one volts and that makes a difference of two volts or we could have the top being positive two volts and the bottom being zero volts that would also give us a potential difference of two volts or in fact the voltage at the top could be 71 uh, volts and the bottom being 69 volts. That would also give us a potential difference of two volts. So really what's important is the difference and not the absolute values of those potentials at each point. Uh, we obviously need those values to calculate it, but the key bit here is the potential difference. Now, we often define the potential in electrostatics as being zero as a point of, as a reference point um, which is a point relating to uh, neutrality, okay? So where I guess the idea that a potential is zero, where it's neither negative nor positive. Uh, and just cl re-clarifying that again, the change in potential is a much more useful parameter. This is because the potential difference is what affects charges between those plates, not the absolute values of potential. Okay, let's do a fun fact. And today it's all about lightning. Okay, uh, lightning has or crosses over a voltage or potential difference of the order of 100 million volts and a current of over 10,000 amps. This is the average lightning. Now, power equals voltage times current, so it, it's an immense amount of power in every single lightning strike. Stick around for the second half. We're gonna go through a waterfall analogy for electrical circuits. We're gonna explain the electron volt, and also we're gonna summarize what we've learned. Okay, waterfalls and electrical circuits. 
what uh, what do these two have in common? And here we're going to go with an analogy to explain uh, how circuits work. So let's have a look at this scenario. We've got a water pump which is pumping water upwards against gravity and on, that's on the left hand side and on the right hand side we've got a waterfall falling down and at the top we've got a flow of a river across uh, and uh, at the bottom we've got it going leftwards so the pump actually does work on the water so in order to increase its potential or potential energy and therefore potential at the very top we have a river flowing high up so it's got a high potential uh, and then it falls back down and that falling back down is the work being done by the water on say a turbine or that kind of thing so it transfers energy outwards uh, and at the very bottom we have a low potential so what we've got this idea here it's a fairly pseudo scenario but we've got a perfectly flowing water current all the way around uh, a similar analogy might be uh, pipes so this we can now use as an analogy for electrical circuits or a basic electrical circuit. So what's actually happening is between the negative and the positive terminal, the battery is kind of pumping the current around. So what it's actually doing is it's supplying a or creating a potential difference whereby you get a current flowing clockwise there. Uh, and the waterfall here is analogous to a resistor. So the potential drops over that particular resistor and you get the current flow there clockwise. Okay. Now let's use this exact same scenario or analogy to explain parallel circuits. Let's say if we split this scenario here into two waterfalls. And what would actually happen here is, as you can see, with water, the current, the current here on the left, so you've got parallel there, uh, two resistors, the current would split. Uh, and we would also have the same voltage drop or potential difference for each of those two waterfalls. Okay, So the waterfalls themselves will have uh, a split current and it will have the same potential drop as the increase from the pump. That's exactly the same as a parallel circuit where the resistors have the same voltage drop but the current is split. Now let's have a look at a series circuit. As you can see here, what happens here is you've got two miniature waterfalls but all flowing from the same thing. Okay, so this diagram here is a series example. And as you can see, the if they're equivalent uh, resistors, you've got half the voltage drop and half the voltage drop there of the other one. Okay, so then uh, what you actually get is the voltage so being split. Uh, as well as that, we have the resistors. current being the same all the way around that water circuit there. And also in a series circuit, the current is consistently the same all in that series circuit. So that's a quick summary on series and parallel with a cool little analogy. All right, let's define or let's define the electron volt. Um, and we can do this with an example. So what is the kinetic energy gained by an electron between two volt plates. Okay, so we had the same potential difference as before. Okay, so we've got the potential energy initial plus kinetic en energy initial is going to equal to the potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. Now it starts from rest, so the initial kinetic energy will be zero. Now we first of all need the charge on the electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Uh, and using the conservation of energy, uh, the potential energy final plus potential kinetic energy final will just equal the potential energy initial. Uh, and that's due to conservation of energy. Now rearranging this, the kinetic energy final will be the potential energy initial minus the potential energy final. Now this is just going to be the change in potential energy, okay? Uh, which will be positive because initials are positive. 
Uh, and having a look through here, the change in potential is the potential energy per charge. So rearranging this here, we can actually get the kinetic energy final is the change in potential times the uh, times the charge, which will be equal to 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So the answer there is the kinetic energy final will be 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now, one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So, two electron volts is equal to 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 joule, joules. Sorry. So, the actual, the moral of the story is the kinetic energy final is two electron volts. Wow. So, pretty much what this calculation is saying is an electron that is accelerated through a two volt potential difference will gain uh, will gain a two electron volts. So that's by definition, okay? So two electron volts of kinetic energy. That's really interesting. So if it's a if it goes through five thousand volts, it's going to increase by five thousand electron volts. So by definition, one electron volt is the energy gained by an electron through uh, one volt of potential difference. Thanks uh, for watching today's video on potential difference. There was a lot of concepts here today, so feel free to definitely go back through the video. And as always, subscribe, and it's very much appreciated. And definitely leave any questions or comments below. I'll see if I can get back to you and hopefully clarify some concepts.